Today on Judge Faith. When his prized BMW broke down, he took it to their auto shop, but says they only made the problem worse. We got the keys from him, we got in the car, we drove it two miles, broke down. Broke completely down. But they say his story is a lie. We put 75 miles on it, it never faulted one time. Now, Judge Faith will decide whose story is fact and whose is fiction. See, whenever someone starts a sentence with what happened was, I know they're stalling for time. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Robert Matthews says he hired the defendant to rebuild a transmission for his car, but the vehicle still doesn't run properly. He's suing for a refund on a car. Defendant Dave Miller says the plaintiff is lying about the condition of his car, and he doesn't know anything because he finished the job. He's countersuing for fraud. He's accompanied in court by Derek Grimes. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, we have Matthews versus Miller. Thank you, Barbara. Robert Matthews? Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant, Travis Miller, and also Dave Miller, for $3,000 for a refund for a car transmission? That's correct. And you are countersuing, sir, for $5,000 for fraud? Correct. So as I understand it, Mr. Matthews, you took a car to the defendant's son's auto shop? That's correct. To have some work done? Yes. Okay, why don't you start? What was the issue? Uh, the transmission was slipping and the lights were coming on on the dashboard, which meaning it needed servicing. I asked him how much would he charge me to rebuild that whole transmission? And he quoted me a price of $2,200 to rebuild the whole thing. So he quoted you $2,200? That's correct. How long have you been working on cars? 35 years in the transmission industry. My parents were in it for 50 years. I've been on my own for 25 years, going on 30. Um, and when did you pass the company down to your son? Uh, about a year ago. So it's third generation right now. My parents for 50, then I was in it for 25, and then Travis has taken over in the last year. And is your specialty rebuilding transmissions? We do. We do. Well, now we do full automotive. We, for the first 25 years, that's all we did was transmissions. Okay. So now we do full automotive transmissions in all car aspects. You rebuilt the transmission? Completely overhauled. Okay. Got it. And so, do you have an invoice for the first time? Because I know you said you had to take it back, but do you have an invoice for the first time he rebuilt yes, the transmission? I do, Your May Honor. I see that, um, please? And so, you paid the full price for the defendant rebuilding the transmission the first time, right? Correct. How long did it take you to do that, sir? Uh, we had some issues with his tranny. Uh, it took us approximately, I think, about 30 days. So, and by tranny, you mean like, transmission. That's, that's yes, the short yes, form for yes. it. <laughs> yes. Did you work on it? Yes, ma'am. Derek's the builder. Stand up. Oh, yes, you're, you, you actually did the work. I'm the transmission builder. Okay, step on over here. So I was the one that actually built the transmission. I tore it apart, I rebuilt it, I put all the parts in the transmission. I wasn't the guy who put the transmission in the vehicle, but I'm the one that did the diagnostics. Uh, when he came in, scanned it, I talked to um, Mr. Matthews personally when he came in with the vehicle. He said that there were some codes that weren't in the car that he took out of the car when he had scanned it. Now, he had mentioned that there was a diagnostic code uh, with the transmission control module. Now, he was supposed to show me what that code was, never showed me the code. Let me ask you this. You, and so you were overseeing Correct. this process. Correct. Okay. So after you rebuild the transmission, you call him up. And you say it's finished, it's ready to go. Correct. Did you think that there were any problems after you rebuilt the transmission? I know anytime you're dealing with the 2000 BMW, a car that's that old, and you're rebuilding a transmission, you never know what you're going to run into once Correct. that's done. Correct. But in your expert opinion, after you rebuilt the transmission, did you foresee any problems with it? No. You went and picked up the car after five days, you rebuilt the transmission, and you say your work is good, it yes, was sure. done, you go pick up the car, what happened? I went down there, a few days later, he says, I need a week to fix the car, a week. Okay, give me a week. 
came down there a week later. He didn't call me. I just came down because he, you know, I hadn't heard from him. I went down, and he's, oh, car's ready. It's over there. It's ready. It's cherry. It runs beautiful. Everything is fine. So me and the wife, we got the keys from him. We got in the car. We drove it two miles. Broke down. <laughs> broke completely down. She was, she was behind the wheel, shaking <laughs> and, and lights coming on the dashboard. And we didn't know what was going on. So she was nervous, people blowing a horn at her and everything. And I was like, pull over, just pull over. And she couldn't even pull over. So I got out and took over, and I drove it back to his shop. So you didn't even drive it home? No. OK. We drove it back to his shop. Got it to his shop, and I said, Dave, this thing is messed up. He said, oh, let me look at it. Oh, OK, well, leave it here. I can't do anything today because it's too late. He says, but we'll check it out and let you know what's up. Three days went by. Didn't hear nothing from him. So I went down, asked him what's going on. He says, ready. I says, ready? He says, ready. He told me, he said, uh, you know what it was? I said, what was it? A fuse. A fuse? I've never, and I've worked on cars too, just like him. I've never heard of a fuse for a transmission. Never. He drives the car back. He picks it up. He drives it back to your shop. You don't dispute that, right? No, no. we don't dispute it. No. Okay, so what happens when he gets back to your shop? Coming up on Judge Faith, was his BMW a classic or a clunker? We went on a test drive. We didn't even get six blocks from his shop and it broke down. The car had multiple electronic problems that his son created. You're telling me they told you one thing, they're telling me they said something completely different. I'm gonna solve this because I'm going to call these people. Plaintiff Robert Matthews says he took his classic BMW to the defendant's shop and he returned it in worse condition. He's suing for a refund on a car transmission. Defendant Dave Miller says he doesn't owe the plaintiff anything because the car was fixed when it left his shop. He's countersuing for fraud. Sir, please go on. We did some more diagnostic on the vehicle and um, it had a blown fuse and it was putting the vehicle into, into lint mode, which the car will start out in a higher gear. It's the computer's way of, of making sure that it doesn't wound the transmission anymore. So we changed the fuse and it seemed to work really well. Okay, so how long did it take to change the fuse? Well, we did more diagnostic than just the fuse. More Because the car had multiple electronic problems that his son created by going into the, the window regulator that rolls the window up and down. They had spliced wires into the computer, the transmission control module computer. Um, when he brought the car back, you have it for three days. Correct. And you saying in that three-day period, you did more tests, but your conclusion was the fuse needed to be changed and then the car will work fine? We didn't know for sure 100% until we got that done. And then or we the transmission right. would be Correct. fine. That's Correct. your Can I say professional opinion, We don't right? dispute anything about Mr. Matthews' claim that he did have issues with the first transmission. Yes. We couldn't correct it. So the transmission had an internal defect. So I told them, we're going to go out and buy another unit, a ZF5 HP19, and rebuild it all over and uh, put it back in the vehicle, which we did. And mm -hmm. the vehicle worked absolutely perfect. We put 75 miles on it. It never faulted one time. One time. We ran it with the computer all the way yeah. up towards Mojave. And did you and charge back. him for that? No. no, no charge. Drove it around town a little bit the, the following day. It never faltered one time. We had the computer plugged into it. Did you do that test? after he brought the car back or before? After. 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 So this was all done after he brought the car back. Correct. All right. So, and this is all done on One your dime. One thing I would like to add, that we, when we purchased that other core, it was 725 bucks, which we paid out can of I our pocket. Yeah, can I all say right, something? so Mr. Matthews, help me understand this now because they paid $725 for your new transmission. You've paid them $2,500. So what is, what, what's the issue? What happened? Okay. They, le they left out a whole lot of stuff here. No, I just want you to pick up from when okay. you picked up the car I the went... second time around, what happened? When I went back to get the car, they had the hood up. They were putting radiator hoses on the car. No, oh, no, never... you're oh, come on. That come on. happened come the on. first time. Okay, they were putting radi Mr. Matthews, I want you to stop. I want you to stop. I want you to listen to me. I am now to the point where you go back a second time. We've discussed how you left with your wife and the car broke down and you took it back. Now, you go back three days later and you pick the car up and you leave this time. Tell me what happens. I didn't leave. I took the car. Derek 
took me on a test drive because mm -hmm. he said it's fixed. Mm -hmm. Okay, we went on a test drive. We didn't even get six blocks from his shop and it broke down. And I asked him, what's the matter? What's wrong with the car? He said, I don't know. He said, this was his words. He says, I'm gonna take it back. We're gonna pull the transmission. I'm going on the internet and see what your car has that I can find out. Where's the, the car now? Time, Where's Honor? the car now? Where's the car now? It's in the garage, sitting in the, at home. In your garage? Yes. Okay, how did you get the car home? That's we what I'm getting to. We towed it home with a dolly. You towed We're, the car from their shop no, to your no, house? No, 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 no. We towed it from their shop. This was in uh, Palmdale. When did you drive the car from their shop to your house? Me and my wife, we, drew, we got it from his shop. We took it, we drove it, because we were going down to, she had to go someplace in, in Palmdale. I took it down. As we were getting on the freeway, we, we felt it jerking and we didn't know what was going on. Six miles down the road, the car started smoking. You could smell, you could actually smell the uh, transmission fluid. So right then she said, I smell something burning. I said, yeah, I'll get off. I got off the freeway, we pulled over, and then the car really started to smoke. So people were backing up. They wasn't coming towards us. We, they thought we were on fire. So I got out, raised the hood up, and it wasn't nothing in the hood. It was underneath. I looked underneath, and it was just smoke coming from, just coming out. Okay. And the transmission was leaking. What did you do then? I called for a tow truck. Who did you call oh. to tow the car? Um, I called AAA. Do you have proof that the car was towed on that yes. day, sir? May it I see that, right please? Here. Where did you have the car towed to? It was towed from, uh, I had it towed to Eastside Auto Transmission. Okay, so you just looked up a, another transmission company? No, I asked the tow truck driver where was a good spot to take this car, because it was obvious transmission. And he said, there's a place up the street you can take Eastside Auto Transmission. Barbara, would you hand me that? And what did they tell you at Eastside Auto? They told me that they, they did a road test, and they couldn't get it to go like they, you know, normal cars. And a guy brought it back, and he told me, he said, it's going to cost $3,000 to rebuild it, $3,500. So this is what they That's wrote. It right there. Did you pay $3,200 to this new company? No, I didn't. What did you do? What happened was they told me that they would do the work, you know, if I left the car with them. I didn't have that kind of money because I just gave all the money to him. I told him, I says, well, can we just leave it here until I can find some way to get it home? He said, if you leave it here, I'm not responsible for it, and I'm going to have to charge you for so storage. So what did you do? So I, we went and got a trailer from a friend of mine, and we put it on the trailer, and we took it to my house, and that's where it is. And that's where it is now. All right. Next on Judge Faith, is Robert the victim of a shady auto shop? Or is Dave being convicted by a con artist? This guy is friends with these people. He's been in business 25 years. That's why he can come up here and tell you that never happened when he did. Just, Just tell the truth. <laughs> That's all we want. Tell the truth. I'm going to give one of you an opportunity to tell me the truth because one of you lied to me. Who's it going to be? Plaintiff Robert Matthews says the defendant never correctly repaired his BMW. He's suing for a refund on a car transmission. Defendant Dave Miller says he properly repaired the plaintiff's vehicle and doesn't owe him anything. He's countersuing for fraud. You can speak. Your Honor, this guy is flat out, flat out lying. Oh, we got God. a receipt from Eastside Auto and Transmission Repair from the technician that drove the car, stating that there was no faults found, no computer diagnostic issues with the car. He told me- How did me, you get this? Barbara, would you hand I it to went, me? I called him up and I said- Well, hey, how did you know that he towed the car I to Eastside Auto? Okay. He didn't tow it, he I, drove it there. No, I didn't drive, I had it towed there, Your Honor. That, that's, a, that's a lie right there. The, the tow trunk, the uh, AAA towed it to that shop. I did not drive that car there. Your Honor. AAA yes. does not give a receipt which yes, we have they in your do. hand. No, they do not. We deal with AAA all the time. I do too. That is not what they give you for towing your vehicle. That's AAA. You can call them and find out right there. And you said all right, you, you know towed what? it in all and, the and, yeah. and guess yeah. what? You what? said you towed it in Mr. All Miller, the Mr. Grimes. No. I towed it home. This is what okay. I'm going to do. You both submitted evidence to me. This is really, this is a really simple thing to resolve because all I have to do is call the shop where you say, you had the car towed to. So you say you had the car towed here, correct? I just right. want to be clear before I call right. them and I speak to this person who wrote this letter the to the court. The owner's name is on the yellow sticky. The person that drove the car's name is on 
the signature portion of the document. Okay, because I'm going to tell Honor. you what this letter says. No, I'm going to tell you what this letter says, sir. Because this letter says that you brought the car in and that you complained about a transmission malfunction and that the car was test driven and no issues were found, okay? This is what yeah. he's presenting as a letter from the shop. What, what, what the deal was, was they didn't take the transmission apart. This was his, this was sir, his. Sir, you just told me, I know what I just heard. You just gave me this letter and you said that they told you the transmission was defective and they, would cost $3,200 to fix. They, this is what they said. They said they couldn't, they couldn't take the transmission apart right there while I was standing there. They couldn't do that. What they told me is that if they did the work on the transmission, more than likely, the guy tried to drive the car around and it wouldn't drive. So he told me, he said, to fix that transmission is gonna cost that right there. Right, you told me that they said the transmission needed to be rebuilt. That's what it has right here. Right, because, because it wasn't moving. It wasn't moving. Okay, so that's all I'm trying to get. Before I call them, I just wanna be clear. You said that they told you the transmission needed to re be rebuilt. Someone from the shop wrote this note. This isn't your handwriting. Right. Someone from the shop wrote right. this note. That's your testimony. That's correct. And they told you it would cost $3,200. Right. Okay, you're telling me they told you one thing. They're telling me they said something completely different. I'm going to solve this because I'm going to call these people. Yeah. We're in recess. Amen. Amen. We're in recess. Yeah. And now, Judge Faith rules. Okay, I called the auto shop and I found out the information that I needed to find out to resolve this case and this matter. Before I do that, I'm going to give one of you an opportunity to tell me the truth because one of you lied to me. Who's it going to be? I'll talk to you, whatever you want to know, Your Honor. What do you have to say, Mr. Matthews? I have pictures. I have the pictures of the transmission, Your Honor. Mr. Matthews, I spoke to the person who actually did the test with you on the transmission at this auto shop. Your car was not towed there. You drove it there. No, I didn't. Okay, oh, second, God. second, I spoke to the auto shop, sir. This is not testimony coming from them. Did you them. call AAA? Sir, I'm calling the shop who I, said I you took the car to. I understand, but they're the ones that towed it, Your Honor. Let me finish, okay. let me finish. They said they test drove the car and that you told them that you didn't really see that there was a real issue with the transmission, but your wife was complaining. So that's why you were bringing the car into them. Do you recall telling them that, sir? Your Honor, what, what I told, what, I, what happened was, they brought the car. See, whenever someone starts a sentence with what happened was, I know they're stalling for time. Did you tell them that, sir? No, I didn't, Your Honor. Okay, L next. This is what I, this, I... Sir, they, they told me that they test drove the car and they could not find any issues with the transmission. They never told you the transmission needed to rebuild. They never told you that it would cost $3,200 to have I the say transmission Your Honor? rebuilt. Oh, yes, See? you can say something if you want to start telling me the truth. I I'm telling you the truth. This guy is friends with these people. He's been in business 25 years. He knows these people, and they, and they, that's why he can come up here and tell you that that never happened when he did. Just tell I the truth. I had Triple A. I had Just tell the truth. That's all we want. Tell the truth. I'm telling the truth. You're Mr. Not Matthews, the truth. Mr. Matthews, Mr. Matthews, before I left to go out and call these people, you said, oh, go ahead, call yes. them. Yes. Yes. Now I come back in, and it's not the answer you want to hear, and now you're saying, oh, they've been friends with them no, for 25 because, years. Because Sir, you did not. You came in here, and you committed bold-faced perjury. And you blamed these people who worked on your car. You cannot do that. If you want to come into court, and you're going to bring a lawsuit, and you're going to bring a case, tell the truth. Your case is dismissed. However, because you committed perjury, I am ordering you to pay them punitive damages in the amount of $500 judgment for the defendants. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.